Hi everyone, welcome back. So we're making a few changes. I've got some parts that I'm waiting to come in for the trailer so that I can continue the trailer build. Uh, right now we're actually in a lockdown, so there's no camping available. They've canceled our campsites and they also uh, are not allowing uh, even Crown Land camping, boondocking. So, I mean, I'm not complaining. There's worse situations going on in the world, but I'm gonna change up things a little bit. So, I'm gonna start with a few videos on the Ranger. I had a few projects that I'd planned to do in the winter, but I'm just gonna bump them up now that I got a couple weeks where I gotta stay home. So follow along and, and I hope you enjoy the videos. So the first project I got planned is uh, I wanna swap out the automatic transmission with the manual transmission. So this transmission here, it's out of 2003 Ford FX, uh, Ranger FX4 level two. So it's got the manual transfer case, which I wanted. To do this swap, I basically took everything I need from the truck. So I've got the front drive shaft is different on these ones. Obviously the pedals I've got here, the flywheel starter, the computer from the truck, cause it's a manual, uh, the engine harness. So this harness is actually the engine harness, but then it loops down around the back of the engine and down to the transmission. So that's different automatic to manual. So we'll swap that over. And then I grab some of the column stuff. So I grab the uh, instrument cluster, uh, the column cover, things like that. So let's get started. I'll explain it as we go, how I'm gonna do it. While my transmission is out, I'm gonna check my timing chain guides in my four liter. The way that these work is they've got one in the back and one in the front. It's so that Ford can use the same head on either side. But it makes it for a little bit of a problem because now you've got a wearable item in the back which you can only access either where you've got to pull the transmission or pull the transmission out or you got to pull the engine out. Oftentimes people pull the engine out because there's a little balance guide up front too that may need to uh, be replaced. So I've got a little bit of a problem here. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You? What are you doing? Give me that. You, give me that, you. Give me that. Okay, go on. Quit making noise. So to do this do this job, I've been spraying anything that I think is going to be difficult to undo. So my EGR tube, all my exhaust bolts down below. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off the hood, pull off my hood first, disconnect my battery, and then just strip all this all the plastic off here, the accessories off the front, take off some valve covers, check those cassettes, see if they they're the updated or if they're broken. You can actually see right away because the back one will be loose you can lift it it's a little bit loose or the front one will crack up top here if if they look brittle or old i've got new cassettes i'll put them in i'm not going to replacing the timing chains it's only got 170,000 kilometers on the truck so there's no point uh doing chains they'll last for a long time it's the guides themselves that break so i've got new guides new tensioners if I need to do the chain, if they're really loose, I do have new chains also. Okay, I've been getting rid of a lot of the plastic, the accessories off of here. So now what I'm going to do is just blow out all around here, just to clear out all the dirt before I pull off the intake, so that the dirt doesn't go down into the engine. Also, just as a little bit of a tip, if you've got a set of these pliers, the big long ones with the curved tip, they're great for taking off different clips like this clip here you can just squeeze that and it'll just pop right out any of the Ford clips like even the these ones here you can just squeeze it release it pull it off the hoses especially these hoses if you just pull them up it'll rip them so you just grab them turn them a little bit sideways and then get down underneath and you can lift them right up and they come off no problem my plan now is to pull the intake off, valve covers, inspect just the top of those cassettes. If the cassettes look like they're the old version or if they're worn, 
then I'll, t I'll strip the accessories off the front of the engine and we'll replace them, but we'll see. Here we're down in uh, on the side of our engine. So we've got our boots here. So I'm just gonna blow around them, clean off any mud that might have gone in there. And then what I got is this tool, it's just a little hook kind of tool. And you just hook it underneath the boot and then you can pull up on the boot. And what it is, does is it stops it from ripping. Otherwise what happens is you can rip these boots pretty easy. So oh, I can't, there we go. So it just hooks onto it, pulls it up, and then uh, releases it. Okay, so we have our intake off now. And I just vacuumed out the valley and around here. And then I just cleaned this. This is just brake clean on a rig and just polishing. Don't use any, um, like a razor blade or anything, because what you'll do is you'll score it. And then once you score that, it'll there'll be quite a, a, a vacuum leak there. So what I'm going to do now is I've just got some of this duct tape and I'm just going to duct tape those holes flat, uh, seal them up, and then if anything drops it won't go down there. I'll vacuum out all the, the intake chambers first and then I'll, I'll seal it up. After that, starting the valve covers, taking the valve covers off. Okay, here we have the valve covers off. Everything's kind of cleaned up, all right. Just taking a look at the guides, you can see how the heads are interchangeable. They can swap from one side to the other. So the timing chain guide, the timing chain is in the back there. And then there's another timing chain up front here. You can kind of see that there. So th these guides right here are what break, crack, I was just looking at this back one. It's not broken, I don't think, because I can't lift it up. It's solid. So here I got the front cover off. So I pulled off the valve covers already, cleaned them up, put them back on, new gaskets. And then the front cover, just to check this, this uh, timing chain cassette, it seems really good actually. Both sides are good. One thing I do notice is it doesn't have the balance shaft. So this motor came out of a two-wheel drive. If it was four-wheel drive, it would have a little balance shaft with a chain down here. So actually, I've, I've heard, I've talked to a lot, and they said that it doesn't make any difference whether you have that balance shaft or not. Apparently, it's for, for four-wheel drive. When it's in four in, in a mid-range RPM, you might feel a little bit of a vibration. But with these big tires on this truck, I feel vibration all the time. So anyways, what we're going to do is I'm going to put it back together then. It looks good. The chain's good. Everything looks all right. The timing cover over here I've got cleaned up. So the crank gasket, crank seal here was leaking quite badly. So I'm going to be putting a new, this is the old one, old crank seal. And you can see on the, um, the damper there's a, a groove that's kind of been worn here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it a little bit further out, just a tiny bit further out, so that it doesn't ride in the same groove, the, the new seal that I install. So I'm just using this block of wood, this 4x4 four four block of wood. Just set it like that, nice and flush, so it's well supported all the way around. And then I've got my um, driver here, seal driver, bearing driver. That I'm going to use to put the put the seal in. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to stick that seal in there and then clean up the surface on the engine really well. And then in these corners here, each corner, and I think probably all the way along here and all the way along here, I'm just going to put a real nice thin layer of RTV silicone. And in the corners, same thing. And then what I'll do is around each one of these, real thin layer of RTV. And then same with the water pump when I install it. You can see that it's a little bit rough here. So I'll put a little thin layer of RTV in there and it'll be good. Yeah, I'll put her back together now. Okay, so let's get started on this uh, transmission swap. So the first step that I want to do is I need to replace the wiring harness because an automatic transmission, obviously a lot more wires than a standard transmission and the computer that's mounted right here 
But anyways, let's start with the tra the wiring harness. So the wiring harness, uh, it's fairly simple, fairly easy to get to everything except for the crank sensor. So the crank sensor, it, it loops its way all the way down here in behind uh, this alternator pulley bracket system down past the water pump and then all the way down to the crank sensor there. Now that wire is shielded. So now that I've got this accessible here, I'm going to go down underneath and I'm just going to start taking off parts down there. I want to take off the drive shafts. Um, I'm going to take off the transfer case just because I'm just doing this myself and it'll make it a lot lighter to drop it. And then um, I'm going to drop the pan also on the automatic transmission because I figured there's a few pounds of fluid in there that I want to get rid of and make it as light as possible. I'll pop the starter out and then, then I'll be able to hit the the flex plate bolts on the torque converter and then I'll be able to uh, remove that transmission. So let's go down underneath and we'll get started now that everything up here is is pretty well ready to go. So under here what I, what I want to start with is I'm going to pull out the exhaust. First of all you can see the the cats there they're going to come out. I'm going to undo this big exhaust pipe back here, drop the rear drive shaft, the front drive shaft and then eventually I'll get this transfer case off right there and then I'll make it a lot lighter for when I drop the transmission. So here we go, we got the automatic transmission out. Uh, I've stripped out everything else that is to do with the automatic transmission. The wiring harness is gone. I installed the standard transmission starter. See if you can see a difference here. So here this one's the automatic. You see the difference in there? Much bigger hole. So the automatic won't fit in this in the standard and it also sticks out too far. It would be engaged with a flywheel. So that's the standard transmission starter in there. You can see my rear main's been leaking quite bad. So I'm going to install one of these PTFE seals. It's uh, the Felpro one that I'm going to put in here. So what's different with these seals is you install them dry. They have to go in dry. Because basically what happens is well, when you turn it, a little bit of this material here, this PTFE from the seal will get rubbed off on the crank and it makes it uh, a complete seal all the way around. So that's really important. It's very different. The front crank seal is just your normal standard crank seal that I put in there, rubber, so you lube them up, make sure that they're really um, lubricated so they'll slide on all right but with this rear main since it's this PTFE completely dry it's got to go on completely dry not even a little bit of oil will contaminate it if it does so even after I'm done I'll clean it well with acetone make sure that there's no oil on that crank so to get this seal out it's fairly easy they, they pop out pretty easy but uh, this is what I'm going to be using it's a small little slide hammer with a screw on the end uh, you could use just a normal screw if you put them in here and then a little pry bar on it you could pop the pop the screw out and with the seal what I like to do is I will drill it with a tiny tiny little pilot hole I don't know if you can see how that, it's a real small little drill and what that'll do is that'll control where the uh, screw goes because otherwise you can damage your crank you could score your crank or you could score um, the block here uh, if you were to put the screw in wrong or if you were to scratch it and then then it would be a real nightmare I'd have to get a sleeve for it here's our old seal out so you can see the little hole and it didn't come through so it didn't score the block and it didn't score the crank you can see down in there Anyways. So that's how I found find take, taking them out pretty easy that way. And here's our new seal. Again, just like the instructions say, PTFE. Do not lubricate seal lip or crankshaft. So we just install it like that. It's got this little plastic sleeve that goes right over the crank. This slides on, and then uh, we'll. I've got a seal installer that we'll be pushing that on with. The rear main's done, just putting the flywheel on now. I put in a new pilot 
uh, bearing here. And if you look at the pilot bearing before you push it, uh, push it in, is there's a seal in here, and the seal needs to go towards the transmission. That keeps the clutch dust from getting in and destroying your needle bearings. So these bolts here are going to get torqued to 55 foot-pounds. But before I do that, I'm going to put a little bit of this thread sealant on them, Permatex, just in case they went a little too far with them and uh, into the oil a little bit. So I'll Permatex all of these and then torque them, alternating pattern. I'll start here, then here, then here, just go crosswise all the way. Uh, and I'll increase by 10 foot-pounds as I'm going. If you, you can torque the, the crank if you're not careful and it will cause your rear main seal to leak. So I went with a Luke clutch. I like them. They're a good, good name brand. Uh, you can see I've got the flywheel resurfaced. I will just clean this off with acetone, make sure I've got off any uh, oil and debris off of it. And then the pressure plate, I've got the pilot to line up the clutch and the pressure plate and the pressure plate is going to be torqued to 25 foot-pounds. So I'll be torquing that. Notice the, the plate in behind there, the, the plate in, that's in between the transmission and the engine. It needs to be for, um, for a standard, for a manual transmission, because it's got a bigger hole here for the starter. Okay, there we have our, our clutch assembly all together. One thing to keep in mind just when you're using the guide for the clutch, the one that comes in the kit, this guide here, when you install it, make sure that it's not uh, hanging down because you can have it kind of at an angle and still tighten it up. But then when you go to slide your transmission in, uh, it'll hit that pilot bearing and it won't go all the way in. So just push up on it a little bit and make sure that it's got a little bit of play in there around where the um, where the needle bearing is, the pilot bearing inside. Okay, let's go do our slave cylinder now. Clutch slave. So for this clutch slave assembly here, uh, it's got one of these little clips on the bottom. It's just kind of like a fuel fuel uh, filter clip. So it's got to be pushed all the way in. You got to push it all the way in. So to do that, you can clean it out first of all with some brake clean, and then blow it out with some air, and then use some penetrating fluid on it and just get it, tap all the way around it, get it right tight. And then once it's in here, and you've got it all the way right tight all the way around, you can get a screwdriver in from the back side and just clip this, uh, hit this little um, ledge here, and then you can just tap it out, and it'll just come right out. So I'm gonna put a new one of these in. It's a, usually a good idea. Uh, I'm gonna use the same thing, Luke, just like the clutch pack. And also I noticed even though this, um, the way that these things work is they've got, it's kind of like a check valve in there. I don't know if you can see inside it there. So it stops the fluid from coming out. Same thing in there, there's a check valve. But I noticed that this clutch was quite soft. And most likely the, the big, biggest reason why these clutches are soft is because there's air in here. The way that it sits in the truck, it's kind of at an angle where it can't bleed. It's like this. So you got to bench bleed it like this. There's some good videos online on YouTube about it. So I'll let you just watch those. But we'll put a new assembly in here now. Also that uh, slave cylinder comes with a thro new throw bearing, which is good to do. So we'll put that in. Then I'll get this uh, bolted up on the bench to do some... Uh, to bench bleed it. I'm going to split the transfer case here. Take that transfer case off to make it a little lighter just because I'm putting this in myself. And also what I've got is I've got some uh, bolts that I've cut off that are going to be like dowels, big long pins, just alignment pins. And that'll allow me, especially as I'm doing this myself, you can get it onto the pin first and then as you're sliding in you can line up your clutch. So that's how I like to do it. And then, uh, actually here, I'll show you the, here's the, the dowels right here, the pins that I made up. So they're just long bolts, slot the end so you can take them out after. And that's what I'm gonna line up the transmission with. Makes it going in a lot easier. Okay, so we got our transmission in now. 
the transmission swaps going well so it's all bolted in there everything fit in nicely I've got my harness now done up uh, the harness is all in all the way up top the intakes back on everything's assembled up top there now I'm gonna put my continue on I'll put my transfer case on the back here and then my linkage I gotta put my linkage across the top here and then I'll probably go up top and you can see there's this cover right here so these covers are different whether it's an automatic or a standard transmission so I've got the cover from the standard transmission it's got the hole here for the shifter and the hole over here for the transfer case so I'll put that in uh, to get that off I gotta pull back my carpet and then after that after I get that in there I'm gonna put my hydraulic clutch system in so that'll require I'll have to bleed it bleed the existing uh, master and line I'll just do a bench bleed for it and then what we'll do is uh, I'll connect that stick that in there with the pedal system and then after that I'll start I'll jump back down here and we'll get the exhaust on drive shafts on and then change all the fluid for everything so that's the plan putting in the new pedals now so here's our clutch pedal with a brake so it's fairly easy there's four bolts right there around the brake master cylinder on the on the pedal bracket and then right at the very top there's two bolts up there you probably can't see it very well but anyways have to trust me these two bolts right here fairly easy to get to you pull out um, the shift shift cable for the automatic transmission and that is where the clutch hydraulic line goes through so that's all fairly straightforward there's already a plug in here for standard transmission you just got to unplug it off of uh, the clip that's in there and then that goes on your um, on your clutch switch here okay so now I'm going to get that pedal assembly out of there to get that out I just push the master cylinder back just so that those four studs are not sticking through the firewall and then it'll just slide right out so you pull the master cylinder back slide out the pedal assembly I'm going to slide the new assembly in I'm going to take off the linkage up here off this column okay so I got my pedal assembly in there now it went in fairly easy just move the master cylinder slid it in bolted it up now we're moving on to the column so the column I'm going to take off uh, the shift the little shift tube here the shifter and a few of these other odds and ends here the the shift interlock at the back and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the um, ignition cylinder with the standard one I have and then I've got the standard um, uh, column covers that I'm going to put over and then what I'll do is just before I put that back is I'm going to take this off and I'm going to take out this uh, Prindle switch here pop that out of there and actually I'm going to be putting in just the new gauges and everything from the truck I took it from so that'll be the next step so first of all column then instrument cluster okay so we got the instrument cluster in that's all hooked up column back on put the little um, shift interlock on here so that's in there now column covers back on I got this apart because I got some new switches here for the cruise control they were in Amazon clearance I think they were nine dollars uh, I don't know 75 percent off or something but so I'm gonna put some new switches in here while I got this apart but we're gonna move on now we're gonna bleed the brake um, the master cylinder outside the clutch master cylinder we will bleed that I'll just show you how I'm gonna do that Okay, so let's talk a little bit about our master cylinder or clutch master cylinder. So you have to uh, bench bleed these. You can't bleed them in the vehicle. I know it's crazy, but it's the way they made it. The reason why is when it sits in the truck, it actually sits like uh, like this. Yeah. And so the air pockets accumulate at the top here, and there's no way to get the, that air out. And so uh, you won't get enough of a stroke on the the push rod here to get the clutch to fully uh, compress and then you will end up uh, frying your clutch so it needs to be bench bled because you need to flip it the other way it's got to be pointed like this 
so that all the air bu bubbles in the very bottom here where the fitting that goes onto the sleeve go all the way up the tube and then out out the top out the reservoir so I'm going to get that set up I'm going to just put it in my uh, vise here and I'm probably just going to run a little bungee cord up to my shelf for the reservoir and then we're going to I'm going to bleed it really well what I'll do is I'll mark the shaft the clutch shaft here and I'll stop bleeding once I, I get only an eighth of play an eighth of an inch of play so anything more than an eighth of an inch is, is no good okay here's the end result just took it for a test drive everything shifts good I had to extend my shifter a few inches and I put on this aftermarket shifter because of that just because of my body lift I still got to put my transfer case shifter in here and get some boots for the whole setup it's good shifts good you can hear a lot of engine noise right now because of uh, my shifter boots I don't have my insulated shifter boots on there or the cosmetic shifter boots so they need to be done but I really like it I love the feeling of being able to shift your own gears not relying on the transmission the automatic transmission to decide I think it's good I think it'll be good for towing too because then you know like if you can see you're close to the end of a hill you'll be able to You'll be able to just keep the gear or if you can see a hill coming up you can downshift you know you can control it a little bit more than if it was just automatically uh, shifting for you and you can also control your braking better use it use the engine as braking so anyways that's what I wanted that's why I did it you know it took me about three days I guess probably three straight days of working to do this and uh, yeah I'd do it again I think uh, I like it okay we'll catch you in the next video back to the trailer now I got my trailer parts so got to get some little bit of work done on the trailer so that we can get out camping hopefully we're gonna be out of lockdown in a couple weeks and we'll be able to uh, start camping anyways you all take care we'll see you next video